It's July the 15th, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as nuclearproctologist.org. And I'm just returning from a eight-day trip on the expedition for life. Now, if you've never encountered me before, you've never seen any of these videos before. July the 15th, 2000. This is a live stream, and so it's difficult enough to make videos, I'm sure. And we just came back from the expedition for life. And we have grave news that concerns every single human, no matter what your language, race, religion, ideology. It's very grave news about, news about Fukushima Daiichi melted reactors. Now, if you're not familiar with that, please give me a minute. And at the same time, consider tweeting out, watch this video, pay attention. This is so important that we have an extinction event playing out and an accelerated, accelerated rate. This is Unit 1. This was a 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. Now, we've never seen that on this planet before. We've never seen anything comparable to this. What we've seen was Chernobyl. Chernobyl was considered the worst disaster 28 years ago. It lasted 10 days, but if you look at the third sentence, for the next 10 days spewed the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs worth of radioactivity across 150,000 square miles. 150,000. It also went to Europe. It also went to UK, Ireland, Scotland, where they still can't eat the meat or drink the milk out of certain parts of that country because of uh, Chernobyl fallout. Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Chernobyl was one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. These are 100% meltdowns. These are much bigger reactors. These reactors had fuel pools on the roof. That's reactor one. This is reactor two. This is 100% meltdown again. We've never seen this on our planet before. It's dire, it's urgent that you, that you understand the significance of what this means. It doesn't just mean your meat and your food and your water is contaminated. And that Canada has now introduced huge numbers of man-made artificial nucleoids into our drinking waters. But they never told us that. And up to 7 million vehicles in a cubic meter, that's your hot tub. You're being saturated and they're not telling you. You're being exterminated and they're not, they're not helping you. There's no sign of good fate. This expedition for life is a crowdfunded operation. And what we just done is we traveled, we traveled up the coast, now down by 26, let me double check, make sure we got that presenter. Down by 26, that's where we started this particular trip. And we went all the way up between 15 and 18. Between 15 and 18, and we camped out on an island. And I'm gonna show some pictures coming up here of what we're looking at the tidal zones, the nursery of the ocean. And you can see this archipelago is 290 miles up the coastline. And this expedition for life is funded to go get that data. It's funded to get out there and always come back. And that's what it is. It's designed to go out there, always come back, is go out there and get that job done. And the job is to go find the species on the coastline. We've been at this for a very, it seems like forever, but it's nine months, ten months. And we have traveled all the way from 26 all the way to 21. And that archipelago out under the GPS speeds at the top left-hand corner of the frame, that's 350 miles long. We went up and went through that. And the species, the birds, the mammals, the whales, the porpoise, the seals, the sea lions, the birds, 168 species of migratory, 147 residential. We've counted no more than 12 species in nine months. We, we've counted, on this particular trip, 
was the most birds we seen was a thousand. We should see that every mile. We did. We we counted that over uh, 290 miles. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna come say hi to people in the chat room in a minute. But I just wanted to really make people understand how significant. As I show you the pictures, and you can see that the nuclear proctologist, this is 85 gigabytes of data that we just pulled from the North Coast. And one of the first encounters we have are seals, baby seal and a mother seal that wouldn't get off the rock. And we could have walked up and petted the seals. We got right up to the seal. Extremely lethargic, unimaginably, that you can walk up to that seal or sea lion or see those two seals. That is unbelievable. These animals are nowhere near healthy. There is fish left in the ocean. There was some signs of life up there. We found melted starfish on day three. Now, Starfish is not the only thing we're looking for, but day one, day two, day three, we took over almost 11,000 pictures to document the coastline that there's nothing there. There is nothing there for birds to feed on. There's nothing there for animals to feed on and forage on. That little bit of algae you're seeing there, there should be 600 algaes. 600. 600. That's residential. That's considered unique for British Columbia or, or the residentials of British Columbia's coastline. And you would find three, four, five hundred of these in any tidal pool. And they were the bases at low tide for moisture for 5,600 invertebrates without the backbones, they're like little shrimp, for 78 species of sea anemones, for the 76 species of starfish, we only found one species very thinly in a few spots and there was very few of them. We found a stretch around 200 feet long on an entrance, McNaughton Island, on that chart I was showing you. Let me run back to that for a second. Let me run back to that for a second. And these archipelagos, we went out to the Simmons group, Simon's group, under 007, there's that group of all, and we went to the ocean, so it's still a little bit rough out there, a little dangerous, and so we came back inside, and we done the inside, we done this interior here, where the Simon Groups is, and we done that basic whole interior, now these, these tracking, you're seeing these breadcrumbs, they're from the GPS on the beak boat, and I haven't got everything uploaded, I've only been home for a little over 24 hours and I slept pretty well most of that. It, it was a perfect trip coming back and the weather was just stunning and we were supposed to have a southwesterly for the last five hours that meant we would be banging into it the entire time but we were it wasn't going to be strong enough that we couldn't go it was just going to be a really really rough trip uh, and the wind was north and so it was right behind us perfect trip all the way home very very fortunate and this expedition, what it's found is that the entire ecosystem has collapsed. It's completely collapsed. And that like all the whales that you're seeing, it's, that you're hearing about in the media, I should say, uh, no, NOAA, uh, N-O-A-A, young herring suddenly disappeared from the Pacific July the 6th. Now, that's not any news. They're just saying that Bristol Bay Times, the Alaska Dispatch, Port Muller Test Fisheries, KDLG, Cadova Times, Undercurrent News, Lillian crew members, you know, biologists, these people are saying that, not any news. And that the young herring are suddenly disappeared from the Pacific and no one can find them. It's an enigma, and no one will say it's Fukushima, because the nuclear industry is that powerful that you can eat the meat in Scotland and Ireland and UK. Let me come over and say hi to everybody before I lose my way here, because I'm probably going to get upset. 
as I as I show you these pictures tonight of the coastline of British Columbia in July of 2015 is naked. There's nothing there for nothing to eat. It's time to give up the attacking me and time to say, hey, you know, just maybe Dana got something and all the people that support him are onto something. Just, just maybe. Just give me a moment of your time. We're looking at an extinction event. This is an extinction event. You can't deny it anymore. You won't be able to deny it anymore soon. Hi, Douglas. Chuck Candace. Sorry for your loss, Chuck. Ellie. Missing Sky. Mr. Arenas. Johnny Kent. And can cannabis cures cancer. And don't forget, folks, that really is true. 100% it cures lung cancer, liver cancer, pituitary glands, breast cancer, brain cancers. And these studies were carried out to some of the biggest institutions on the planet. This, this, that's why they, I'm not going to go down that road, but I mean, my goodness, anything, anything petroleum can do. Hemp can do it better. And hence, it's a better cure. Hi, Kate. I've been calling you, Kate. I can't get you on the phone. I must have your wrong number. Call me with your number so I don't lose it. And Kate runs the, the Fukushima Hounds. You'll find that site. Hi, Michael. Toxic. I'm thirst. Missing Sky says, Cannabis story that was supposed to go to you, Ontario. You made a mistake. Kevin O'Kane. Thank you. Michael. Adam, hey buddy. Hey <laughs> Adam, yeah. Yeah, we got a troll tonight, do we, Kate? That's okay. Trolls are fun. Trolls are fun. I know The Verge shut off their comments because of trolls. Not that The Verge should exist. Not should that they should be propped up like they're something special, but they are. They're a soy up anyway. But the trolls were were countering their lies and their propagandas, and they, they got rid of the comment section instead of pre-approving it or something, right? <laughs> I just delete some and block some. I don't care. I'm not going to lose no sleep over a troll. Freak accident. Logo. I'm not going to get everybody. Yeah, you call me, Kate. Hi, Amy Beaver Radio. Thank you, my friend. Okay, let's keep going. Look. This is a recent headline. I have to say hello to people because that's what we are. We, we are the hounds of Fukushima. <laughs> and you don't want us on your ass. So, and not only that, I mean, that's how we got to where we are, is everybody, everybody pulling together and doing what we do together. That's what makes it this this thing that it is. It's everybody. Miss Melky! <laughs> Jan thought I forgot her. And, you know, like, let me remind you that Eni News, uh, they're, they're not writing the story. Bristol Bay Times wrote the story. So you got to debunk everything every media on the planet is saying in order to debunk Eni News in one sense, haven't you? They're not saying nothing. They're just showing you the headlines in a paragraph and linking you over. You click on it. You right open the link in new tab. And there it is. Smoking internet connection tonight, Dana. Uh, Nactic Fisherman Cope with slow opener. Slow. 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 The sardines have crashed. Everything has crashed. Um, hordes of jellyfish 10 blocks long. Jellyfish usually show up after the salmon season. May 14, 2015, long before the salmon season. Hang on, just an emergency closure of fishery along the entire west coast. Almost no babies surviving since 2011. Catastrophic crash. Population decimated crisis. Collapse so severe. Latest and serious alarms. You know what I'm saying? These headlines. There's nothing out there. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. I'm jumping back and forth because that's how it's done. U.S. scientists testing for radiation in dead whales as mysterious die-off in Pacific continues. 
The whales are eating the krill. Those fin whales eat krill. Not exclusively, but mostly. They're filter feeders. The same as the gray, gray whales, you know, there was like 14 of them died a little back a couple of months ago. And they eat the 6,500 invertebrates without the backbones, those little, they're like little shrimp, but there's 6,500 different species. You know, there's eight, uh, 4 million species in the ocean. But here in British Columbia, where they, they feed in northern British Columbia, more dead whales are found. Uh, and like the fin whale, and then the other whales are dependent upon herring, which is dependent upon the krill. The salmon is dependent upon the krill too, right? The seals and the sea lions off California are dependent upon, oh, I don't know, the krill and the phytoplankton. Right? Especially the babies. That's why they're emaciated and walking like skeletons. That's why they're chewing on rocks on the beaches. And that's why they're, when they x-ray them, they find rocks in their stomachs. 10, 15 pounds of rocks in their stomachs because they got nothing to eat because they're starving to death. That's why, that's why I was able to get up to these guys a few days ago and it shook me. I mean, it shook me. I left and moved away from there altogether. I didn't want to look back in that corner no more. That shook me. That rocked me. It's not the first time. That's the problem. You got to get a job done. And that job is get out there and document nothing. When I say nothing, I'm just, yeah, I don't mean just, I mean nothing. 600 algae, you shouldn't see that rock. There's nothing for the, the you know, the, the periwinkles and the snails and the mollas and, and there's nothing for the nurseries. There's nothing there for the krill to hang out in when they're larvae. There's nothing there for, you know, the invertebrates, the, the basis of the food chain is dependent upon this whole ecosystem, the, the fish and, and, and the, the small fries and, and the little baby smorgasbord of rockfish out there. You know, like a, like a lingcot or an oyster has 10 million eggs. And th that nursery is gone where they would hang out to for little periods or where they would normally flow through and, and they would get fed on by the creatures that would live in the kelp. That whole ecosystem, the entire ecosystem has collapsed. And we've documented it for nine months. But my goodness, you know, look at what I'm saying to you. You can see a limpet there. That's a little limpet right there. I know it don't look like a limpet, you just take my word for it. And there's maybe five or six algaes, but there's not like there's very much of it. It's not like it's healthy. It's not, not normal. It's not normal, see? Let me find some rocky pictures where there's rocks. Because where there's rocks, there's caves. And where there's caves, life clings, right? In the shade and places like that at low tide. And so all you see is this little tiny handful of algae. That's it. And then you're seeing a fine layer. And you see these rocks here? Most of the rocks are like this. And if you scrub your foot on it, it disappears. It turns to mush. It has no integrity. So if it's on the open ocean, it won't last because that'll wipe it off. That's on the back side of the islands. That's on the west coast. We're out there on the west coast. It's... It's... 5,000 miles to Japan, right? It's on the other side of us. Right out, just outside of this island, it's 5,000 miles to Japan. The ocean flows through here. It flows through these back channels. These were full of yachts, multi-million dollar yachts. Oblivious, too drunk, too stoned to know what they're doing probably. Probably the lucky ones. And what you got to do is you got to tweet this out. We got to start moving our asses. We got to get in gear. We got to move on this. That's the end of the nuclear industry. That got to go. Goodbye pensions. Goodbye salaries. Goodbye good old fashioned prestige and You know now the scum of the planet. 
You are now the most frightening thing on the planet. You're the boogeyman. Parents will tell their children, you better go to bed or we'll get that nuclear scientist to come over here and eat you. That's what they do. They eat children. Okay, Dan has gone out there on this one. Hang on a second, though. I only tell you about two of the reactors. Here's Unit 3. 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. Here's Unit 4. 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. Thousands and thousands of degrees inside of these places. And everything above it would have been cooked and fried. The buildings were picked up and had their backs broken and were melting down in the first couple of hours. They were melting, some of them were melting down within 50 minutes of the earthquake. So that's just before the tsunami struck. The tsunami, think about what the tsunami done. Think about what, I, what they tell you, right? Oh, the reactor survived. Look at this comparison of before and after. Nothing survived, right? You know, in the common sense, they cleared down all the rubble. They just, well, it didn't have nuclear, the so-called nuclear waste, right? It wasn't a reactor. But those buildings mostly looked exactly like that. That's what they looked like. Everything was torn away, right? That's why you plowed it all down. And that's why that picture looks that way. Right? Think about Chernobyl. He sent in 600 pilots. That's Japan behind me. They made an attempt at it and they gave up on it. Chernobyl, he sent in 600 pilots. They all died, every one of them. Radiation sickness. Some of them fell right into the top of the reactor. So much radiation, they just... They, they were dying right on the spot and they lost control. And they just... They couldn't... They lost their vision is how they reported it. Think about how Chernobyl... Once again, just before I go back to the pictures. Think about how Chernobyl... Look at the third sentence. And for the next 10 days, a Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. Hiroshima, or any bomb, is just a tiny percent of the fissionable product turning into a cloud, a follow cloud. Here's a map of what um, the FBI, CIA said what your country in America would look like if we were under attack by Russia from nuclear fallout. That's what it would look like. But here's what the testing looked like from the fallout in the 60s. Or the 50s, I'm sorry, 51 to 62. So 11 years, and this is what the Americans done to you, so the Ruskies wouldn't do this to you. But we're talking about nuclear fallout is 5% of the, of, of the fissionable products spreading out. Now, don't quote me on that number. It might be a lot more. It might be 100%. But that's what they allude to, that is 5%. So it's probably a lot more. Bear with me, though. When Japan's three, three melted, we'll say right now three melted reactors, because there's three confirmed finally, because we forced them to, to do that. And they even changed their wiki page to reflect that. <coughs> You see that, see that above my head? That's Noah's model of the radioactive fallout from just a single reactor, from just one reactor. But it didn't stop going into the environment. I'm going to make my point. Hang on. It didn't stop going into the environment. That's why our water looks like that now in Canada. But natural radiation is 0 0.05 of a becquerel a liter. Man-made. That Just give it to them. Don't worry about it. They're too stupid to ask. So do you think? I can assure you, people on this planet are not stupid. And that once they got the information presented to them properly, like we're doing tonight, then you can't pull the wool over their eyes no more. It ain't going to be that easy. Let's go look at this one here. Now this one here coming up, You can't hear the audio, but that's a melted starfish. Now, the colors are enhanced on that camera. I didn't know Terry was doing that. And normal circumstances, that's what you would do with enhanced colors. But unfortunately, what you're seeing there is not true colors. But nevertheless, that's a purple starfish. That's the only one we've seen that day. And he's melted. And we took 2,400 pictures that day in that island group. 
on day two. And as I put it up on the website at the nuclear proctologist, all these pictures, it's going to take me around 20 days. Now I'll come back because we're broke and, and we don't, I can't ask for money anymore. I just can't do that. And so i got to find a better way to raise money. I really do. Because I just can't keep doing what I'm doing. I'm nutting. And i got to ask for money. And I just, there should be a way that I can, there should be enough awakening that we can go out and do this research and get it out of the way and produce the documentary and get it out there and get out there on tour and push it out there and make people aware and have a debate and give it out and produce hundreds of copies and just freaking give it out to people everywhere. And it'll move out there like you won't believe because that's what we're going to end up doing. But what that... You never even got to see that because I probably didn't switch, did I? Yeah, I did switch. It didn't switch on your end. Or the video's frozen up or it doesn't work. Hang on, I'll restart that page. Probably talking for an hour with nothing. Okay, I was yakking. I was yakking. I stopped the video instead of the audio. Okay, I'll leave. <laughs> I had me worried for a second I wasn't <laughs> transmitting. So all the models are based upon a single release for just several days from this one reactor. None of the models, that's one, it's a 100% meltdown. They didn't tell you that, see? They didn't include the reactor or the spent fuel pool, just a release that they'd done to relieve pressure. Right? But that release, relief pressure, ignore this for one second, is, that's what that model is based upon, that release of that pressure. So why would the model be based upon if they hadn't done all that? Right? If they included this fuel pool and the reactor that melted down, I wonder, what would it be? If they included also Unit 2, which is 100% meltdown, melt through and a melt through, what would it be if they included Unit 3, which is a 100% meltdown, melt through and a melt through? And what would it be if they included this number 4, which lost its inventory? And it's a huge inventory. Those fuel rods have to be cooled down for about 50 years before you can actually put them into a dry cast. And so when they lie to you and tell you that it's only a couple of years, it's, and you hear that because that's the law. It's the same thing when they tell you it's like a banana or a potato chip or walking in sunshine or getting a dental x-ray or getting on an airplane. How can that be compared to ingesting a man-made radi radioactive element atom with an isotope in it? Right? How can that or many isotopes in it? How can that be? Because it can't. But that's the law you've been fed. And if you go and look up anything, that's what you're going to run into: is bananas, potato chips, walking the sunshine. And now they include smoking, the polonium. Polonium is not from a chain reaction. The stuff from a chain reaction, from these chain reactions, is deadly. This is different than Chernobyl. Chernobyl was unimaginable. And what this has done to the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, in particular, and I'm sure all the Pacific Rim nations, is not just us, has eradicated all the species on the coastline. And once again, you know, we got some close-ups of the barnacles. There's a couple of limpets. And you really got to hunt for that. There's some kelp, coral kelp, I think that's stuff there. But because the colors are enhanced, it's hard... It's a hard to to really represent it, but it's still okay, right? It, it does bring out the colors, and it gives you a chance to have some, another look at it. Here's the tent we stayed in, and we don't know what's in these pictures. It's always up on the bunk, and so we had a bunk each and an eight-man tent, and that's Terry's bunk. Terry's in the bunk, and then we had... The ocean on one side of us, we wake up in the morning and find ourselves at work. And so the boat is moored off on an anchor and it's on a clothesline. So we can just pull the skiff in and out. And then we got the boat is anchored. There's a stern line anchor and then the bow is tied onto a big log over there. So it's very safe, but you can wake up and find yourself at work in the morning. And there's nothing here. Nothing. On this side here, down there, we found a another melted starfish. Now, I don't know if that's the same spot. Hang on a second. What day was this one? 
But this one here was um, out the back door. It's a nighttime shot, just as it's getting dark. Terry's cooking supper. And we went down to the beach because it's low tide there. And here's a melted starfish right out our back door. Unbelievable. And we did find another starfish on that beach, a single starfish, a purple starfish. But that was about it. Now, hang on. When we were coming around, this little tiny school of, I think, a steelhead trout or it's um, little salmon, baby salmon. That's the only time I've seen that in eight months, nine months. But the day we were leaving, there was a school of those and there was a couple of thousand of them. And so that was extraordinary. I never got footage of it, unfortunately. And we, we left 4 o'clock in the morning, started packing everything up, and we got out of there yesterday morning. And we got home yesterday afternoon around 4, 35 o'clock. So it was a very long day. It was a 10-hour boat ride. I think we done it in 9 hours or something. Uh, but it was really cool to see these fish. That was like, it was something about it. You know, it's just that little tiny peck of fish deer in that whole area. I've never seen that before. And then the next morning, or a couple of mornings later, there was a school of several thousand of the same fish uh, around the boat there. And that was amazing. Utterly amazing because we've never seen nothing. You figure the birds would be chowing down on them, but there was no birds feeding on anything. There was hardly any insects. There was a certain black uh, fly insect uh, that hangs out at the low tide, uh, but he doesn't bother you or bite you or anything like that. But there was nothing else. There was a couple of bees. There was a bee nest there behind us. I thought it was a ground bee, but it wasn't. Now, we had water wash into our tent the last night we were there. The high tide was a 15-foot tide. And so we had moved everything up high anyway. Uh, and that made life a hell of a lot easier to deal with, for sure, having a tent. It's still an unimaginable amount of work. It's just a just an amazing amount of work. But like you say, uh, on one side of us is water, right there on the other side is low tide is water. And all is that barnacle and that kelp uh, weed you see there, which is the most popular, I'll get another picture. That kelp weed, hang on. That kelp weed, look at Buddha, I saw a... She's right here alongside. And that kelp weed. Here I'll pick. Are we back? Are we streaming? Finally. Yay. Woo. How long was it down for? Am I not? I'm smoking a cigarette, but it's not the 7,000 chemicals. It's a player's true blend. I've been Jade Helmed, Info Power, Hi Mad, Molly, Douglas, Toxic, Shanigan, Hose. And I'm back, 7,000 chemicals. Missy Sky, Douglas, Ertis. Yeah, that was a weird one. We got kicked off. How long were we streaming for? We'll never know. No one's saying. I don't know where I got kicked off, so. I got 42 minutes. I guess we got most of that stuff in. Let me see where I was yakking about. We've covered the whole coastline. I shouldn't say yakking about. Let me chat for a second. Hang on. Let me get out of this. Because I'm going to put all these pictures up at the nuclearproctologist.org. I've been home like a, like 24 hours, and I'm just worn out in one sense. I'm ecstatic that I got the trip done and that we got the data editor and that we're able to now come out. And unfortunately, you know, it's not unfortunate. It's, it's, that's just the way it is. Somebody has to come out and do this. Somebody has to come out and say that there's four melted reactors. We've never seen that on our planet before. 
There's four melter reactors. We better get our asses in gear, come up with some technology to deal with it. There's four. Because the spent fuel pools that were on top of the reactor four, they were full of the old reactors. They were full of the old reactors. You got to think about why the fuel pools exist on top of the building and how long they store that stuff there and how long those reactors been running and how much those reactors use. Not what they tell you. You got to understand that there's 3,450 assemblies in the reactors. They're not going to tell you the truth. They never even admitted for the first couple of years the media and covered their life for them really well. You got no one out there you can trust anymore, only your own eyes. And there's nothing left on the coastline. We're looking at serious, a serious event. We're looking, like if you think about Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico, and he killed beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 35 plus years, almost four decades. And he killed them with plutonium and americium. Plutonium. Just a tiny, tiny fraction of plutonium. A millionth of a gram will kill you. It'll take a number of years to get you, but it's not going to drop you dead. It'll take millions of years to get you. This headline is July the 10th, five days ago. Pl plutonium levels 10, 10 million times normal in water below Fukushima reactors. See, when they tell you something, you have to understand what else is there that they're not telling you and that they're not going to tell you. It, like Tevco created 5,500 speedy models of the plumes when the reactors blew up, but they never told anybody they blew up and, ca and that they released anything. So, so they couldn't show you the plume, otherwise they have to admit that stuff got editor. Other countries created models, other institutions, other continents modeled the releases only based upon NOAA's model. And can be, you know, the plutonium they found in every river flown into the Pacific had 239, 240, 241, 242. Dr. Raymond Gilmetti showed that the smallest amount killed 70% of the animals, the dogs, the beagle dogs and the beagle puppies, in about four years. But they only got a small amount. We're getting huge, huge numbers. And the proof is that the coastline of British Columbia, the proof is the acceleration extinction. That's an accelerated extinction event we're looking at. That model, if that wasn't include all the releases and the ongoing constant releases, you couldn't see Earth. The Health Canada drinking water standards, go look it up yourself is a reflection of what they know but didn't tell you. And that everything you see alongside of me is man-made ionized radiation. is extremely dangerous. If a terrorist got a gram of it, it can contaminate a small city, no problem at all, with an explosive device. And they wouldn't shut up forever. Oh, we found a couple of Beckwells in the city. We can never go back. But when it happens to you, they increase it in your drinking water and not tell you about it. and tell you it's, oh no, it's below the safety limits. What you do then is you find out who they are going on, you punch them in the mouth. You take one for the team. That's what we're forced to do now. we got an extinction event. We're all going to have to take one for the team. I'm not saying go down and punch them in the mouth. I'm not saying not. I'm not saying you're going to have to. I'm say their wives and kids will punch them in the mouth when he finds out what they got done. You kill the Pacific, that means you killed everything else. The birds are gone. The whales are emaciated because there's no food left out there. That's why the fin whales are dying, the gray, all the baleen whales. And that's why, because their food is gone. It's already gone. Everything is gone. That's why all the birds are gone. That's why there's no migratory birds or animals. That's why there's no big, massive, huge millions of birds migratory down the coastline. It's all gone. We got to get that out there. We got to make something. We got to make a attempt to save the planet. We got an attempt to save some species. We got an attempt to save ourselves. 
And you got to do that by eating healthy. You got to do that by, like turmeric got over 600 studies. And you can put it on cuts. It's just amazing stuff. It's amazing for all kinds of ailments. 600 studies on this property is so good for you. Organic vegetables. When you go to your supermarket, there's all these pretty pictures and boxes through the supermarket. That's GMO. 85, 95 or worse percentage, everything in your supermarket is GMO. You gotta run away from that stuff. You gotta stop eating candy bars and, and pop in particular because of the aspartame that's created by bacteria. You gotta just eat healthy. Like the studies on the GMO, studies on organic, what they do with GMOs, they reduce the calcium, the carbon, the potassium, the iron, the cobalt in the food, tiny, tiny percentages of parts per million. To the volume that you would have to eat, like when it comes to calcium in comparison, they took so much calcium out of the corn, you would have to eat a truckload of corn, not a truckload, but 400, and 25 pieces of corn, GMO, to get the same amount of calcium as an organic. And that dandelion has every mineral, micro, macro, nutrient your body craves. And that mountain water is structured the way it was throughout the universe. It doesn't have the man-made chemicals added to it. It doesn't go through a machine where there's electrolysis will change the, the properties of the molecules where you, because your body is tuned into that water, not to the water you get in your tap, not to the water you get in a bottle. That's not structured waddle. waddle. What is waddle, Dana? It's not structured water. It's so important, though, structured water. Structured water, which is mountain water, spring water, will make your plants grow 30% bigger, will make your plants... 30% uh, more quicker for producing the fruits or the flowers or the, or the product. And that, you know, right now you got to learn to accept that every university is a lion sack of shit. Every one of them are a PR firm for whatever industry needs them next, whatever corporate personhood needs them. A corporate personhood is like Google for instance, where nobody can be held accountable. They get a fine, nobody gets a criminal record, and then they commit those crimes over and over, stealing from everybody. No one goes to jail because they're a corporate personhood, and they have more rights than you. They have human rights, and you don't. You're a number, you're a bean to the bean counters. And you better get your asses in gear and do something. I don't know what, but you need to to denounce the nuclear industry, you need to denounce the nuclear apologists, you, you, like Kyle Vetter from UC Berkeley. That is scum. That is the lowest form of life besides Jay Cullen from UVic or Ken Busler from Woods Hole. These are the scum. These are scum. These are the lowest forms of life imaginable. They lie to you. They mock you. They, they are an abomination to the human spirit. They defy any explanation. They are heartless. They are absolute monsters on our planet. And they will be held accountable. And it won't be that long. Everybody will despise these people. You will despise every nuclear scientist on the planet when you come to the realization that the Pacific Ocean is dead. They already despise themselves. There's no love lost. It's just a fake person in a fake world. That's, that's their little world they live in. They have to lie to their family and their friends that it's like a banana or a potato chip or walking in the sunshine or a dental x-ray that you turn on and off or getting on an airplane. You ingest a radioactive atom you're from Fukushima, you're going to get a cancer in 5, 10, 15 years. But everybody is ingesting massive amounts because these models only include a couple of days releases from venting, not from the melted reactors, not from the spent fuel pools that were atomized in the aerosol, not from the three melted reactors, not from the detonated unit four, not from the ongoing constant cannibalization through the chain reaction of steel and rebar and cement, and they are atoms, and they are being ionized and radiated, and they're the animosity equivalent of, of not only 400 Hiroshima bombs over every 10 days, but over a thousand Hiroshima bombs a day are coming out of Fukushima. 
a thousand. We say a thousand, but you got to consider how many atoms are in a rock. Like a five pound rock has enough atoms to kill everybody on the planet if you can distribute those atoms. A single pound of the stuff from Fukushima will kill everybody on the planet, period. Every 20 minutes you can fill up a theater, kill everybody in that theater with the ionized radiator that I already gone through a chain reaction is now atomized in aerosol and a little bit of it's in that model. Not all of it's supposed to be in the model, but a little bit. That falls out and rains out and washes down. A single release from Fukushima, that type of action would be just devastating. What the hell is almost 1,600 days of it going to be? The entire Pacific coast now, officially, we're documenting that because somebody got to do it. Somebody has to go and get the data. Somebody has to do that. It has to get done. There is no shortcuts. There is no way around this. Without the data, you can't have a conversation. You can't even look at people. Look at the kelp. All the kelp. Every bit of kelp we saw was shot. Everything. There's nothing there for anything. Now, bombshell, because I'm... It's going to take me a couple of days to get back up to speed, but I'm going to leave you on this note before I come in and say goodnight to everybody. That I ran into a couple of the divers up in Shearwater a few days ago. And they told me they couldn't get anything all the way down the rivers. It's a huge patch of land they covered for over a month. They can't get, they couldn't sell anything, let alone find anything. That is shock and see. That's defeat. That's what I saw. They're gonna head back up north and scrounge up some pounds. Well, like I've been telling you, it's all gone. It's just a matter of a year or two. There will be no whales, no porpoise. There's very little there's only a couple of species, I think it was four or five species of birds this trip out of over three hundred species. There was more puffins than there was seagulls anywhere on the coastline, which and there wasn't many. There wasn't hardly any seagulls. Can you imagine? On an ocean where there should be 5,000 birds every square mile, there was only a couple of birds at best, if you were lucky to see that. At best. There was a couple of spots, I mean, where there was a patch of them, but you wouldn't see nothing for 20 miles. And there would be, say, 100. In, a, in an area as you went through it, but then it'd be nutting again. It was just that little patch. It's unbelievable that the nuclear industry thinks for one second that they're going to get away with this. This industry lasting any longer. This industry is dead. Coal is 10 times better than anything nuclear does. 10,000 times better, well, a million times better than anything nuclear can do. Coal is better. Nuclear, the only purpose nuclear got is an extinction. That's all it's going to do. And there's probably nothing we can do about it. But we should treat it like the meteorite that it is and take every institution on this planet and put it to work to solve it. Because that's what we would do if there was a meteorite coming and was going to wipe us out. Fukushima is no friggin' different. Fukushima is no different than an extinction event. Of the, of like a meteorite, except you can't see it. So does, is it not there? Is the pictures I'm showing you not real? Are they not significant? I know I'm doing a bit of a... Well, all I can say is, you know, I'll start uploading pictures tomorrow, any luck at all, and then it'll be a daily grind to get the pictures up on the net. And we'll just keep pounding away with these videos, educating people. I still got stuff I want to do around this coastline locally, like day trips and stuff like that. And we'll think about raising money for that later on when I get the energy up to go do it. You can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org or you can donate through PayPal, Dana Dernford at hotmail.com. When you go to PayPal, you type that in, that's how you find people. It's easy to set it up. And But I'm, I'm just saying is that I can't walk away from this I got to get this done. We got to get out there and spread the message if that's what it takes. We got to do what it takes. It's up to us. We're it. And I'm not going to shirk 
from my responsibility that I can get the job done. And I'll be out there on tour before this year. So we'll have that documentary out. And there is no other way for us and this entire planet only to get busy, get in their faces, hold them accountable, get out there and document it and ask the question. You know, have you heard of Fukushima? Please look it up. Please understand that it's Chernobyl was, was, was really bad. Three Mile Island lasted five days. Chernobyl only lasted ten days. Look how bad it was. Fukushima didn't stop. It's many times the size. Many more reactors. Never stopped. Still cannibalizing and turning everything into ionized and radiated elements and releasing it into our environment. Still melting down. Still in that China syndrome. Still can never get in there. They're going to lie to you. It's time to end the lie. Maybe that's the next one. Hugs for everybody. Kate, love you too, sweetie. Bob, Hose, Toxic, Shanikin, Missing Sky, Dom, Cheers, I'm Thirst. Good night, everybody. we got to get on Facebook. Get on Facebook, folks. Get on Twitter. You know, this video is a good video. It's a little all over the place. It is what it is. But it's the beginning of it. Maybe the moral will be better. Who knows? We won't get kicked off. we got to do something. If our whole coastline is missing, everybody else's is missing. We're next. If all of that got killed off, we're going to be killed off too. It's time to get rid of the GMO as a sign of good fate. It's time to evacuate the coastlines. Like they're done with the Chetcha River, they evacuated 7,500 communities permanently. It's time to do the moral and ethical thing. It's time to stop lying about claiming it's like a banana or a potato chip. It's time to hold those accountable. It's time to get angry. It's time to get back in their faces. Hugs for everybody. Artists, Shani Ken, Miss, Miss Milky, Jan, hugs, honey. I will. Freak, Amters, good night, everybody. Once again, I feel better I got up and done something productive here tonight. I'll be busy tomorrow. I'm going to bring the boat in, get a few things done to it that I should have done the last trip so that don't happen again to me, yeah, just in case I get out there again. But, I, I mean, we need to take advantage of what we're doing. We need to get out there and get that data and get it up here. And I'll start that tomorrow. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. Adam, thank you, folks. Hounds. Get in gear if you can, right? If you can do something, please do it. If you can tweet it or Facebook, please do that. If you can call up media and ask them to be accountable and stop saying bananas, at least tell them to stop doing that. At least stop mentioning bananas. Please! Please! Take care, folks.